All right, so I've gotten a lot of comments about how the fruit thing is getting a little bit out of control. And I agree it's a little weird that we have two males only. For that reason, I'm very proud to introduce the newest member of the team, Melon Lordette. I'm not crazy, you're crazy. Back me up on this. Yeah, there you go. You wanna say a few words? Didn't ask for your life story, but all right. This is so stupid, it's still wrong, it's all wrong. There we go, that's much better. You ready, gang? Team Fruit and Vegetable. <laughs> Chapter 11, Skeletons in the Closet. Hamon has torn down the tyrannical bending government. He has declared bending illegal. Wow. One day soon, bending will no longer exist and we will live in a world where everyone is finally equal. There's a big problem with Amon's equality plan though, obviously. You can take away bending and make people equal in that way, but that's not gonna guarantee true equality. One issue this show does a great job bringing up is the fact that there are people who come to power and want certain things, and they need people's approval to achieve their aims. And the best way, and maybe the only way to do that, is to stir an emotion in people. And so Amon has done a great job capitalizing on people's emotions of hatred, fear, jealousy, right? But if you really think it through, is equality the goal for most of them? Maybe not. You two were gone a while. We were doing reconnaissance. Whatever. At this point, I think she's pushing it a little bit. It's a little bit too much. We didn't even know each other then. And now, I can't imagine my life without you in it. You're the most loyal, brave, and selfless person I've ever known. I think you're pretty incredible too, but you already knew that. Uh-oh. This is so wrong. She started to move on. Like in the last episode, she was kind of oblivious to the whole love triangle thing. But now Mako, not being satisfied with his wonderful girlfriend, is trying to reel Korra back in. Korra, I also think, should be better than this because she's developed a relationship with Asami to the point where they're friends now. Is that not a factor for you? I should probably try to get some sleep. Yes, there you go. Me too. Good night. <sighs> he looks angry. Good job, Korra. Respect for Korra up. <laughs> they're here. <gasps> there he is. I didn't know we were coming. So why aren't we meeting any resistance? It's a trick. Wait a second. Where are the equalist airships? Aman, interestingly, has the traits that Korra is trying to learn. He's the patient one, right? He has no trouble waiting. Even when things are right in his hands, he'll wait until there's a more opportune moment. Something's not right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. What is that sound? What is what that? What now? Yeah. Are oh, they actual planes? Wow. Yeah. Cora? <laughs> Cora, where are you? <laughs> oh, damn. Well, they're dead. Can Cora metal bend? I can't remember. Yeah, you know what's weird? It's like, things are going in different directions anyway. Like for all of Mon's talk of equality, the bending techniques actually seem kind of old school and like outdated. Like the guy throwing the little disc at the airplane, right? It seems like equality is something that was gonna happen anyway, just through innovation. There you go. Okay, she can do it. Nice. gonna be an interesting way for them to meet too. Wow. Cora? <laughs> Cora, where are you? <laughs> there you are. Yeah, speaking of an interesting way to meet. We need to ground those aircraft. I'm sorry, but I'm not going with you tomorrow. We need to stick together. My gut's telling me it's time to end this. My grandfather would respect the Avatar's instinct. So will I. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My fear for Korra though is that there's a bigger like game over moment for her, right? She doesn't have as much room to make mistakes as Zuko did. Like Zuko's out in the world meeting people and trying to find the avatar, right? He was growing as a process, but this is kind of a bigger deal. But I think that as long as she's going into it with open eyes, as long as she knows what she's getting herself into, as long as she really feels like this is what she needs to do, I respect that feeling at least. I'm sorry things got so messed up between us, but whatever happens today, I want you to know how much I care about you. I care about you too. 
care about you is not enough for a relationship. I care about a lot of people. I care about my dog. I'm not dating him. There's Amon. Whatever happened to Tarlock? I guess he's just gone now because of what happened. Actually, I was thinking about Amon and Tarlock later after watching that episode, and it occurred to me that the creators might be trying to create what often exists in real life, which is opposite and binary sides. I think the problem with both of them is that it ends up not being about their stated causes like equality or what was Tarlock's cause? Order, saving the city, right? And it really ends up being about tribalism and just destroying the enemy and having power for oneself and one's own group. Neither of them are good choices for the people of Republic City. One thing I think sets him on apart from Tarlock is that at least his aims are out in the open, whereas Tarlock is scheming. As humans, I think that resonates with us a little more strongly, you know, knowing who people are rather than never really knowing how to place people. Like for the longest time, I didn't know what the hell Tarlock wanted. I'm still not quite sure. We're not alone up here. Who's that? Tarlock? Oh, there he is. I was just speaking about him. Are there other prisoners on the island? No. And what makes you so special? I'm Amon's brother. <gasps> what? Wait, I gotta think about this. I'm guessing they're both motivated by what happened with Yakon and Aang, but they internalized it differently. The other day I was thinking about how it's really interesting that Aang and Amon have a lot of parallels in this situation. Amon, weirdly, is doing what Aang did, but taking it to an extreme. It seems like Aang's decision to energy bend Yakon is what started the chain of events that led to Amon wanting to erase bending from the world. Amon is from the Northern Water Tribe. He's a waterbender and a bloodbender, okay. just like I was. That makes sense. What? It all began with my father, Yakon. Right. He assumed a new identity and settled down in the Northern Water Tribe. That's where he met my mother. They started a family together. <laughs> Amon was the firstborn wow. under the name Noatak. I didn't expect that. Aang actually gave him like a nice life, even if he didn't solve the problem permanently. At first we were excited by our new abilities, but our training brought out a different side of my father. You two will become bloodbenders of the highest order. When the time is right, you will claim Republic City and you will destroy the Avatar. That is your purpose in life. The good days were behind us. This is something from The Last Airbender too, right? The legacy of the past repeating through generations. It's really weird how the evils in your own life don't end with you. Oh wow, that's pretty good. That's cute, making them dance. Aw. I had no stomach for manipulating helpless animals. My brother, however, seemed to revel in his newfound power. That's interesting because it's kind of the opposite of how they turned out, right? Tarlock is pro-bending and Amon anti-bending. These poor wolves. And one day, he made us blood-bend each other. Wow. That's pretty Tarlock. messed up. Tarlock, your turn. That felt awful. I don't want to do that to anyone. I never want to blood-bend again. Wow, I'm like, it's weird. I'm developing so much sympathy for Tarlock now. I'll teach you a lesson, you insubordinate. Stay away from Oh me. no. What are you gonna do about it? Oh yeah, he has Here's no powers. Right. You always say bloodbending is the most powerful thing in the world, but it isn't. The Avatar is. That's true. You took your bending away. Don't leave, please! With Noah Talk gone, his hopes for revenge withered. And he passed away a few years later. Wow. I... Wow. I'm amazed how this show can, like, make me feel bad about Tarlock. It explains a lot about him. I mean, he basically spent his entire childhood having to fight for survival. Like, no wonder he is manipulative. I am truly sorry for all that I did to you. I thought I was better than my father, but his ghost still shaped me. I became yeah. a soldier of revenge just like he wanted me to be, and so did my brother. That happens, you know, like, as kids, you just have to do whatever you think is necessary for survival. You're so dependent on your parents, so you end up picking up on all their cues and vibes because they're so essential for you being able to function in, in, in that world. There comes a point, though, for a lot of people when you realize that the people that I'm following are not these divine beings, they're flawed humans. That's a horrifying thought and it just shakes your whole life up. And one normal reaction to that is anger. Whoever that influence is in your life, you look at them and feel enraged that they put you through this 
this, disgusted by what you see as their failings, and then you vow to never be like that and you end up often in this other extreme that is also harmful. One reason why it doesn't work out is because it's still not you, it's still reactionary. It's still their legacy, it's just the flip side of it, it's the other side of the coin. And that was the realization that Tarlock just had was that he's still perpetuating his father's legacy in a different way. He's still not free, he hasn't become who he actually is, he's still living under that crippling weight of the abuse his father put him through. And so is Amon for that matter, probably. The revolution may be built on a lie. But I think Amon truly believes bending is the source of all evil in the world. Really, it sounds like Amon is just looking for a, a scapegoat for his own trauma, his own anger. And so he settled on bending, which makes sense because bending was what changed the relationship with him and his father and his brother. You gotta wonder though, if part of him doesn't love it, like they showed a little hint of the fact that he wanted to be the most powerful and for him, the most powerful thing is being able to take bending away. So in that sense, he maybe is living out his father's legacy too. You know, he's still trying to be the ruler, right? The leader, just like Tarlac was, just like his father was. It's just that for him that, that manifests as removing it from others. I'm guessing he wouldn't remove it from himself. He somehow uses blood bending to take people's bending. I don't know how he does it, but then again, I've never encountered a bender as strong as Noatak. Even more development for Amon somehow. We already saw Yakon as the most powerful or one of the most powerful benders and then Amon has surpassed him as a bloodbender and doesn't even use it aside from like taking away people's bending. There's another way to beat him. How? Finally, we have the advantage. If we expose him as a bender in front of all his supporters at the rally, we could take away his true power. Right, that would definitely reveal his hypocrisy. Defeat him. Put an end to this sad story. Wow. I love how they made Tarlock redeemable. And also made me sympathetic for him and Amon. What Tarlock and Noatok are perpetuating is the anger from Yakon of losing his energy bending, which was Aang's choice. It's tricky, like not saying Aang is wrong about it, but the actions you have, you know, they have ripple effects beyond what you can immediately see. That's one of the challenges of being like an authority figure, right? Like leading and making these big choices for others is that things have a way of coming full circle. They come around to bite you, bite you in the ass. I'm also thinking now that Tarlock is still trying to measure up to his father, right? Like at first I thought it was contradictory that Noatok was the powerful bender, but doesn't want bending. And Tarlock is the weaker bender, but wants to suppress non-benders. But it could be that Tarlock is still trying to please his father in a way. He's still looking for that approval he never got. And Amon got that approval, but resented it because it made him something that he hated. And so he had the opposite reaction to it. Interesting, I started out talking about how they're both so similar. I didn't realize how true that was. I mean, they are similar because they're like from the same stock and they're dealing with the same problem. The problem is they're living out the evil legacy of their father's unresolved issues, which at heart is a very real and human thing. I was so engrossed in that episode, I didn't even talk to my fruit friends. Got any, uh, yeah, uh you? No? All right. <laughs> Cabbage bro, you're not looking so hot over there. You okay? Starting to decay a little bit. Is he bothering you? Can you dial down the creep factor a little bit over there? Sorry about that. We'll move over here next time. All right, that's the end of this episode. I'll see you for the grand finale of season one.